Hello and welcome to today's uh, Bite Size PD. Today's Bite Size PD is called Collaborative Crafting Part 1. And with this, what we're going to be doing is focusing in on um, a writing progression. So uh, we'll start off with audience and purpose. Um, who's the audience? We'll move into uh, looking at focus. Then we'll look at evidence, elaboration, and conclusions. Um, as we go through this, we're going to look at, uh, we'll bring up a few strategies, uh, and then we'll have a conversation with teachers, uh, with uh, Stephanie Nasser and Michelle Hall. Stephanie Nasser is the eighth grade ELA teacher at Albion Middle, and Michelle Hall is the instructional coach, former ELA teacher, um, also at Albion Middle. So we'll have a conversation um, to get exactly what it is they do with their students, what's worked. Um, learn about some of the things that haven't worked, uh, how they how they've overcome those obstacles, and then um, get a chance to observe the teaching in action. Um, we'll also have some of the student uh, resources, some of the uh, ex examples of the work that they've been doing, as well as um, handouts, any handouts or anything that that they may have. So, welcome. Um, I want to start off with this quote right here, until the lion learns how to write, every story will glorify the hunter. I think that really speaks to the importance um, of teaching teaching our kids how to write, um, not just to, to be able to do uh, it for tests, but to use writing as a communication device, um, to use it as a persuasive device, to use it as a way to affect uh, change. And so um, just something to really chew on until the lion learns how to write every story will glorify the hunter and so i'd consider who's the hunter and who's the lion and um you know how are we going to make sure that um that our lions can get their stories told so i'll move into slideshow here and we'll move past these but today we'll be focusing right here um this is the mtss framework that we always show i blew it up um, we're going to be looking at evidence-based instructional practices that are academic. Uh, this really hits uh, teacher clarity, explicit instruction, um, the instructional hierarchy. Um, within it, you're going to see the feedback cycle happen. You probably will also see systematic vocabulary and structured classroom discussion, as well as maximizing opportunities to respond. Uh, instruction is also definitely scaffolded here, so that's also a bonus. So we'll be hitting many, if not all, of these areas. Um, throughout this series. So our learning intention and success criteria today. Uh, today's learning intention is that uh, we want to kind of hone in on that fifth pillar of the writing framework, um, the secondary writing framework, which is teach critical skills, processes, and knowledge. And so what we're really going to be talking about then is, that our, is kind of how we teach those critical skills and the processes. Um, and then you know you're successful when you feel confident that you can, um, you know, go out there and, and give it a shot to use some of these strategies or maybe be inspired to create some of your own um, strategies for how to teach audience and purpose to your own students. So our agenda then, introduction, which we've just done, I'm going to talk about the writing framework that um, was developed over the summer. Um, we'll go into part one of audience and purpose which will be kind of a little bit of background information and um and, and what this is what it means we'll see it in action or we'll get to see stephanie uh doing a brainstorm with her students and then um a quick conversation with stephanie and michelle and then we'll close and share some resources so to set the stage let me tell the story of the secondary writing framework uh last year about this time um, I had the opportunity to go up and um, work with the University of Utah Reading Clinic. And um, I know it's a reading clinic, but they were doing some really great uh, writing work um, with some teachers up in Ogden, Ogden School District. And so I had the opportunity to go observe that writing work that they were doing. And while I was doing that, um, I had uh, come across some research uh, by a gentleman named uh, Steve Graham and found out like he was one of the only people who really had hardcore research at this point um and there's a little bit here and there all over the place out there but had hardcore research on secondary writing and so i really dived into that research and 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 sort of tried to find okay what are those things that we know work 
that we can quantify or that we can say, okay, there is research backing this up, but these are kind of the obvious things. Um, and we can almost use those as a checklist. And so a few drafts um, and working with uh, Leslie, and after a few drafts, we had basically come up with uh, this, which was the Canyon Secondary Writing Framework. And we attached sort of a lot of other research to it, the Wet Works Clearinghouse, uh, the National Council of Teachers of English, um, you know, as well as Graham, as I had talked about earlier. And so um, these were the six, these are the six pillars. And I think we could all agree on, on all of them. Um, the first one is to create and maintain a supportive writing environment, um, which means to foster a dynamic writing environment that sustains a positive writing culture and empowers students as writers. And so we all know that you have to have a, a place where you can take risks and be vulnerable in order to, in order to uh, experiment with something new or something that uh, a problem to solve that can be solved many ways um, and to flounder, which is writing and word choice. Um, so that environment has to be supportive. Um, to write extensively all the time um, in a variety of ways. Um, one thing I think that uh, you know a lot of people have talked about is that they only see, they might only see their students write when it is for uh, a high stakes uh, purpose. So their students they might only see their students writing for. Um, you know, it was uh, as a as a summative or uh, for for sage or at rise. Sorry, as a summative, um, or if they're not being tested that year, they might not even see their students uh, do that much writing at all, um, which is kind of sad. But I think what we need to do is really hone in on writing. How often, um, and really across disciplines, we can get there. But um, how do I how do I use writing with my with my students all the time? Um, as a vehicle to wrestle with ideas, which leads us into three, which was engage students in writing to learn and low stakes writing, so that writing isn't always a a, uh, a summative. Writing isn't always um, a a demonstration of knowledge, but also a place where you can uh, build upon your own knowledge. Then leads us into number four, which is facilitate while students compose, and so. I mean, there's a lot of benefit to the teach, seeing the teacher write with the kids and writing, letting them see your writing, letting them see your decision making, letting them see, you know, behind the curtain that uh, that when we write, it's not always a polished piece. In fact, it, it rarely is. And so, um, you know, working with kids um, when they write. Also, I think um, providing feedback during their writing. Talk about a way to lessen the, the grading load. Um, if you've already looked at the writing before they've turned it in, you, you pretty much know what's going to be there. And so you can spend a lot of time now honing in on um, the one or two areas, uh, you know, with their piece versus having to grade the whole thing since you were reading it alongside them or over their shoulder as they were doing it. Five we'll talk about today, which is teach critical skills, processes, and knowledge. And those are st the strategies. And then the sixth is utilizing next generation writing modes. So I hope we're able to hit number one, two, three, four, and six, um, you know, throughout a variety of, uh, you know, seeing teachers doing it in their own practice, um, uh, sharing some of the units that we do. Um, and today, though, we're going to really talk about number five. So let me go back. So looking at number five, then pillar five, uh, we'll zoom into that. And what you can see here is um, we created a, a, basically we unpacked the standard and created a writing progression. And so again, today is gonna be scaffold writing using learning progressions um, and the critical components are tapping into prior knowledge, providing students with a step-by-step -step structure for engaging the writing process, use collaborative writing strategies with students and model by writing with students. So if we go into it, then the writing progression looks like this. And don't think of these as weeks, think of them just as sections. And so you have number one, um, the first thing you, you might teach would be how to dissect a prompt for audience purpose and format. Um, you'll notice that on this, it's all, there's a lot of demonstrate and guided. Um, number two, you know, once we've done that, we go into practicing paragraph structure and topic sentences for focus. And then we, we delve in deeper and deeper. One thing you'll notice is that as we hit the fifth section of this progression, um, this is when it's time to really hone in on um, 
where we differentiate. So it's uh, we've guided all throughout, and now we can see, okay, well, this these students are struggling with elaboration. I'm going to work with them on this. These ones are work, focus, or struggling with organization. I'm going to work with them on this. And so that's almost a rinse and repeat process moving through six and seven. And so the number eight then kind of gives us an idea of what this whole cycle is, which is basically prepare, instruct, practice, uh, assess, adapt. And you keep going in that um, that cycle uh, until your students are able to write proficiently. Again, though, just one thing to point out is this is one way of doing it. There are many ways to teach writing, and this is just one way that we can do it. Um, so when it gets to audience, air, and purpose, what's really interesting, um, we started studying this, this text right here, and I had an opportunity to work with the author, and it's called Real World Writing for Secondary Students. And one of the first things they noticed was that um, students, this was uh, seniors in college writing their college admission essay, but one of the first things they noticed was that students were really struggling to write. Um, First off, they didn't really know how to generate. They were struggling to generate from, from a basic prompt because um, they were used to already having been given that already. And then the second thing um, was they couldn't envision who they were writing to. And so they did an exercise where they sat down with their students and actually had them um, create, uh, you know, almost to look at the biases of who they thought they were writing to. And then they did some research to figure out who they actually were writing to. And what they noticed was that um, this quote on the second one, students gained more confidence and voice regarding the writing task when they realized that as students, they were the customers and they were writing for real people. And then they became better writers because they were writing for real people. Um, and then another thing, which is the first quote is audience awareness is one of the major markers that separates novice from experienced writers. So, you know, it's crucial that we know who we're writing for and that we have at least some buddy, imaginary or real, that we are writing for in mind when we sit down to write. So what I'd like to do now is share with you this um, clip and the next couple of bite-sized PDs that we do. It's going to be less of me just talking all the time like this one right now, but um, it's going to be more of a, a discussion or almost like a panel with Stephanie and Michelle and whomever else wants to join us um, where we will look at uh, her teaching and then also discuss sort of what happened and and in the intent and what worked and where should we go next. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play here. Um, as you're watching this, kind of see how, um, how Stephanie scaffolds the writing um, with her students and consider sort of, you know, your year and when your scaffolds like this might um, go into a gradual release um, when your students start to do the problem solving of writing themselves. I'll go ahead and play. So we tend to break down whatever it is we want them to write about back down to the basic, basic, like this character did this and it caused X and then from X they got Y and then put it together again as a whole. Um, it's pretty awesome to watch because the kids realize that as we break it down, kind of like a Mad Lib where they fill in different pieces and then you say, okay, this is number one and this is number two and this is number three and they highlight it and they realize that the, all the heavy lifting is done through this process of looking at what is the purpose, who is the audience without them really like going, I don't know who I'm writing this to, or I don't know why I'm writing this. Because so you are picking another reason. You are picking something else that has to do with your number two in your column. My first example was right here, symbolic speech. This is my number three. So if I'm talking about symbolic speech, I could use this as my four. I cannot cause harm. I cannot be offensive. I would probably not add that part, the, dis the traffic, but I can't incite violence, right? If I, if I were symbolic speech, you see what I'm doing? If you, if you break it down in this way, it becomes very simple for them and they get very, um, they get more involved in the context and the content of what they're writing versus I just don't want to write this. Like they don't care because it's an essay. It becomes very thought provoking for them. And she guides them so well. And 
with even the scaffolding of questions, they're good at finding now evidence and they'll, they're so comfortable with her. They'll tell her, Nasser, I'm, I'm struggling with how to make this relevant. And mm -hmm. then she'll just ask like, why is that important? Why did you choose that? And then they'll vocalize it. And then she's like, yep, put that. And so, so I think it's just, yeah. they, they need to be comfortable and then kind of ask themselves um, without her guidance eventually, why is that important? Why did I choose that piece of evidence? Um, because they are getting better at it as she's going through this. Like she said, they're on about essay seven, um, but it's nice to see that conversation. And then she's just, she's like, you know this, so let me just help you vocalize it so that then you can write it. So that's a quick look at what the conversation is going to be. And there'll be more of that uh, where we're discussing sort of, you know, what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, let me give you sort of a preview of what it'll be like moving forward. Um, and just know that we would love to have you join the conversation. If you want to join us during one of these bite-sized PDs, share a way you do this, um, or just come in and observe and be a part of it. We would love to have you there. But looking ahead, Part two is focus, so what do you want to say? Um, that's going to be on the 6th from 4 to 4.30. Part three is evidence, which is assemble an army of evidence, which will be on the 17th of January from 4 to 4.30. Part four is elaboration, what's it mean? And that's going to be on the 7th of February from 4 to 4.30. And then part five, conclusions, where we address the so what. And that's going to be March 13th from 4 to 4.30. For each week, we're going to provide uh, teacher footage so you can see it in action, uh, student samples. What did the kids create from that footage that you actually saw? Um, that's real and authentic. We're going to have um, resources used um, that, that the, the teachers are willing to share. We'll also have other resources um, and other sort of uh, here's some quick ways to do this. What we're viewing is really Stephanie um, and her team over at Albion have, having built over three years the program that they have. But there are also some kind of quick things you can go do tomorrow. And so we'll share a couple of those resources as well. So, and there's a lot of writing on here, breaking many rules of uh, presenting, but I'll just be really quick with this. One of the things, three quick and easy strategies, what could you do tomorrow to teach your students about audience and purpose when it comes to writing? Um, one is to use what you already have in your room, which is to pair them up. And so you could have uh, students interview each other and learn something about one another. Um, and then they could write something for that person, given what they've just learned about that person. Um, what kinds of words would they use? What, what kinds of, uh, how would they connect? How would they make that person care? Another one is to rewrite it. So you could always get a model text. You could you could pull it out there, and then you could uh, analyze it for audience. Um, maybe look at an op-ed and grab those. Uh, you know, something going on. Maybe something with like the Great Salt Lake or whatever. And you could say, okay, let's analyze this as a class. What's um, what are the word choices they're using? What who is their audience? Who are they trying to reach? Um, and then you could flip it a little and say, okay, now change the audience to this, and then change the audience to that. You could almost have six or seven different audiences going in the class at the same time and then you could share and have a discussion about how that impacted the decisions they made as writers the last one was one and there are there are many of these but this this last one here was one um that jessica early had done with her seniors and i think you could do this to any level but to research it so we often have prompts that say something to the effect of um you know let's go for like the most boring prompt in the world um dress code uh the local school board had just decided that Canyon School District students should have a dress code. Write a letter to your local school board to persuade them whether or not we should have a dress code, yes or no, you know? So now I can, I can pull back and go, okay, well, before we write any of this, we should probably figure out who that school board is. And we can go research them. Um, we could see what are their positions, what do they vote on, um, what are they passionate about. We could look at their, their photos, we could look at their um you know their their interests and almost create a character profile before we write and then they could pick that one and say okay this is who i'm writing to actually bringing it into view uh into view for them so three things you could do tomorrow um each one maybe 15 to 20 minutes of a class um, to start really hitting uh audience and purpose with your students like I said earlier, we'd love to have you join the conversation um, where you can share your expertise. You can show the how you teach critical skills, processes, and knowledge to your students. 
Um, feel free to join on any of the um, these areas. Maybe you've got a great technique for elaboration and you'd like to join in for that one, or you have one for conclusions and you'd like to join in for that one. Feel free to come join us. We'd love to have you. Um, and with that, I'd just like to say thanks.